Hello and welcome. My name is Yannick. I'm the French guy from Switzerland, and this is part two of my uh, Let's Learn Flutter stream. Um, part one didn't go as well as I expected. I had troubles uh, installing Wint uh, <laughs> um, Android Studio, not Ubuntu Studio. Android Studio uh, and the SDKs and uh, accepting the licenses and so on. Hello, Big Pod. Welcome to the stream. Uh, so yeah, I spent uh, uh, about two hours, uh, well, an hour and a half setting up my environment and then I had a problem with my internet connection. So uh, I had to restart this, uh, the, the stream. Um, but in the end, I got it running. I uh, managed to create the default app with uh, Visual Studio and the Flutter plugin, and uh, I can I can actually show you if my phone would want to turn back on. What is the default Flutter app? It's really not impressive, but let's go to this scene. We are in Visual Studio Code here. That's the Flutter website. I have the default application. So let's run Builder. Hmm. Okay. So where does the error come from? That's the good question. I think that was uh, something I typed and I didn't want it to. And I'm going to run this thing. It's going to do its magic. And then we will see that on the phone i'm not using an emulator because uh because i have a phone so i can run that directly on the phone that is as soon as gradle finished assembling the debug task let's see that how are you big bud it's been like two days since i have talked to you so <laughs> it's been <laughs> long and there we go we have this default app that I've already messed with. I have changed the um, the default text, and uh, and also when you press plus, it will tune. Yes, it counts two by two. And the thing I was impressed when I did uh, impressed with when I did that is that if I go if I go here. And I change this text here. I can say you have pressed the button, the button that many times. And I save and ta-da! It has updated the, the app on the fly and I put that back to where it was initially. And it's not happy. Why? Avoid using braces in interpolation when not needed. Yes, okay. I will avoid that. And now, when I press the button, it only increments by one. So that's the default Flutter app. Uh, I'm already impressed with the environment because... Oh. Let's come back to uh, portrait, yeah. As you can see, if I put that in full screen the application is running right now and we've got a bunch of of debugging tools and I'm really impressed that uh, when you press uh, let's say this text here and it automatically finds that in the code so that I can can then go and edit that uh, this text was the the counter here and uh, yeah tons of information that looks great but it's useless if we don't know how to write a Flutter program. So that's what we're going to try tonight because I don't know squat about Dart and Flutter. And so this is, uh, well, this is not completely strange. It looks like some kind of, of C Sharp or Java or uh, yeah, kind of languages like that. And so yeah, it kind of looks like uh, uh, TypeScript too. So uh, maybe more React. 
because there seems that there are some kind of HTML embedded in in some kind of language, so it does look like uh, like uh, Rea um, JSX is that is it the React uh, React language? Anyway, let's see. So I have the f oh, let's remove the phone from there. There we go. Uh, Dart is sister. Oh, okay, I actually can bring Big Pod in the chat. Dart is C style oriented, object oriented programming language. You know the best style of parodying him. Yeah, well, it is. Um, it is not completely alien to me. So that's gonna that's gonna be fine. Okay, so here we go. This is the Write Your First Flutter App Part One. And um, well, that's what we're going to try and follow. But I, I don't think we're gonna go for like the whole thing. I just want to get uh, an idea of how we do that, and then we'll dive into the API and try to do wild stuff because that's how we learn by doing stuff uh, and uh, making mistakes. All right, so constant step one, create the start of Flutter app, use an external package, add a stateful widget, create an infinite scrolling list view, profile or release runs. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to skip the video and go straight to the written tutorial. What you'll build in part one, you will implement a simple app that generates proposed names for a startup company. The user can select and unselect names, saving the best ones. The code lazily generates 10 names at a time. As the user scrolls, more names are generated. There is no limit to how far a user can scroll. Well, that sounds great. I'm sure it could be useful. The animated GIF or GIF shows how the app works at the completion of part one. Well, we'll see that. Uh, we'll learn a bunch of stuff. What we will use, we will use a lot of stuff and we will see that um, as we go. Every Flutter app you create also compiles for the web in your ID under the devices pull down or at the command line using fl Flutter devices. You should now see Chrome and web server listed. Is it? Do we? Do we? Um, launch package new module. How can we choose a device? Oh, I don't see any device menu here. Under the devices pull down. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything. Oh well. We'll see. We'll see when we get there. So, create the starter Flutter app. I um, think I've done that. Create simple templated Flutter app using the instruction in getting started with your first Flutter app. Okay, so we did that, except it was not startup namer. But we can do that. Let's do let's do this. Shift Control P Flutter new application project. Yes. Run that. Uh we want our Flutter project to be select a folder to create the project in. So that's gonna be Flutter project. And we're going to name our Project startup namer. Uh, it's going to do its thing. Create a skeleton of an app, and that's going to be the exact same app that the one I showed before. If you don't see the new Flutter app and you died, yes, I did see that. You will modify mostly edit lib men the dot where the dot code leaves. Okay, that's great. That's here. Uh, replace the content of libmen.dat, delete all the code in libmen and replace with the following code which displays hello world in the center of the screen. Which is uh, not that, useful, that useful, but we will do that anyway. But we'll have a look at what we write. Uh, so there's a copy here, that's nice, okay. Right, wait, what do we have here? We have an import package flutter material dot dot, okay. We've got a, what looks uh, like a closure, which is a uh, void main that then call, uh, executes run up my app. Okay. And here's my app. Okay. Oh, 
seems pretty simple. My app extends stateless widget. Okay. Well, it's probably what it says in the in the name. And then we overwrite a function which is build. Okay, it gets a build context and it returns a widget and it will return a material app. And I guess this, this is the attributes. So title welcome to Flutter. Home. What what home could be? I don't know, maybe the main component. And scaffold, so we're going to build something. We have a an application bar apparently, which says welcome to Flutter. And then a body. Oh home home should be the it's possibly the it's possibly the home screen for the app. Yeah, may, that would make sense. And then a body, the body has a center, so it's probably a text or something. And that has a child, which is a text which says hello world. Oh, center, it's probably a layout. Uh, we will probably see that. Uh, on the uh, documentation, you're watching me and playing a space flight game. Kerbal Space Program. Nice, nice. Hope you don't crash your your rocket while you <laughs> listen to me. Uh, okay. Um, right, let's run this thing. So I think I have to press F5. And it's going to compile that. Let's bring the Android phone on the screen. Ooh, I'm making mistakes here. I need to move this part of the screen. Thank you, OBS Live Editing. The lovely lady on the phone is my daughter. Well, it was... Uh, it is of a, a two-year-old photo, but still, it's my daughter. And there we go. We have our uh, Flutter app. And it was supposed to... Oh, there you go. I was going to say, it's supposed to say, Hello World. And it does. So we can find our components. Let's uh, have a look at... Yeah, we don't really need the code arc and maybe I can move that a little bit more on the screen. Yes. So we have our root. So root should be probably the material app. Oh, no, it's... Uh, oh, it's uh, above my app. Okay, so root is probably the phone. Then there's my app. Okay, my app, it's here. Inside my app, there's the material app, which is this thing here. Okay. And then we can find our scaffold, our center, and our text. So the center is this thing here. And I would venture a guess that it centers everything that it has inside. <laughs> and then there's the text here. And I don't know if I can change... No, I, can, I cannot change things here, apparently. I can only click on things. It's purely information. Okay. And then my app bar and the text in my app bar. Cool. This detail tree, I don't really know how to use, but. Okay. Oh, it's the same as, as this one, but with, uh, with lots more details. It would have been fun if I could have changed the text from here, but I can't. Nice. Okay. Let's go back to the tutorial and see what it says. Tip when pasting code into your app, indentation can become skewed. You can fix this when for it. Uh, well, okay, we don't need that. Run the app in uh, the way your ID describes. Uh, you should see either Android, iOS, or web output depending on your device. Well, we did see the. Android output. Let's uh, turn the phone, uh, put the phone away. All right, observation. This example creates a material app. Material is a visual design, design language that is standard on mobile and the web. Well, it is standard for Google stuff. I wouldn't say that it is the standard on mobile and the web. I'm pretty sure the guys at uh, Apple will uh, argue against Material being the standard on mobile, but anyways, it's a, it's a Google website, so of course they will say that. Flutter offers a rich set of Material widgets. It's a good idea to to have to uh, use Material Design 
true entry in the Flutter section of yours. I have no idea what this is, but if it's a good idea to have that, then we hope that it has been set like that. Uh, how can I even know? Don't know. Where is this file they are talking about? In the Flutter section of your pubspec.yaml file. Uh, pubspec.yaml, it's there. And what does it say? Does it say, use metadata design true? Ah. It's such a good it's, it, it's such a good idea that they actually use that by default on their uh, example app. Nice, nice. Okay. This will allow you to use more features of materials such as the set of predefined icons. Cool. The main method uses arrow notation, the arrow notation for one line function or method. Yeah. So that's what uh, that's what I thought. It's uh, it's a lambda. They could have just said that. It's a lambda. <laughs> the app extends stateless widget, which makes the app itself a widget. In Flutter, almost everything is a widget, including alignment, padding, and layout. That's cool. That's not the case in GTK, for example, where you have layouts and widgets, and widgets go into layouts, and then you assign the layout to another widget. But yeah, why not? It, everything is a widget. Fantastic. The scaffold widget from the material library provides a default app bar and a body property that holds the widget tree, tree for the home screen. The widget subtree can be quite complex. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Not every app will have a center and a, a, a text that says hello world. Some might have a few more complicated things. A widget's main job is to provide a build method that describes how to display the widget in terms of l other lower level, lower level widgets. So that's that. That's that. Our my app has a build function, and it returns whatever is below. And I guess those also have their build function internally. The body of this example consists of a center widget containing a text widget. The center widget aligns its widget subtree to the center of the screen. Well, hence the name. Okay, so far so good. Use an external package. In this step, you'll start using an open source package named English Words, which contains a few thousand of the most used English words plus some utility function. You can find the English word package as well as many other open source package on pub.dev. Let's have a look at pub.dev or pub.dev. I didn't even know this f this was uh, a thing. Oh, this is a f ah, that's why I didn't know that. That's an official repository for that and Flutter apps. Yes, because we didn't have enough repositories yet. So we had to have a new one. Why not? Why not? I mean, obviously we're not going to mix uh, Dart and Flutter apps with um, Python packages, for example. So, yes, okay, pip.dev. And then... Uh, most popular packages, collection, collections and utilities, function and classes related to collection. Okay, logging, always useful. Cache manager, Flutter plugin, Android. Flutter plugin for accessing an Android lifecycle within other plugins. Okay. Geolocator, yes, can be useful on a mobile app. String scanner for passing strings using a sequence of pattern. Nice. Country code picker. Flutter type ahead. Oh, used to auto complete text. Mm, okay. Okay, so I guess uh, instead of reinvented the wheel. Maybe have a look at this uh, pip.dev site. Okay, so do, do, do. the pubspec YAML file manages the assets and dependencies of a Flutter app. In pubspec, pubspec YAML, add English word 315 or higher to the dependency list. Pubspec YAML, yes, okay. Uh, and there's something called dependencies. Yes, it's there. Oops. Uh, Ah, dependencies flutter, and those are the dependencies for the flutter test. 
Ok. Flutter SDK, Flutter Cupertino Icons 013. Ok. Um, we will add English words. And 400, uh, greater than 400. So that looks like the, the Python notation or the Gradle notation. Um, because startup name depends on English word 400, null safety that zero, which requires SDK version 2.12.0, but less than three version solving failed. Ah, oh. okay. Uh, why? SDK 2.12.0, but less than three. And what SDK do we have? What SDK do we have? I don't know. It doesn't start very really well. It doesn't start really well. I feel it, like this is old because this says 103 for Cupertino icons and I have 013 or maybe it's a, maybe it's a typo. But I need to fix that. I don't know how, but I need to fix that. It's not a good time. Generally, package manager is standard way to make a proof of concept that language language works. Yes. Yeah. Mwah. Let's see how we can fix that. Because startup name depends on English word greater than 400, which requires SDK 2.12 but less than 3 and we said 2.7 here so I'm going to say let's try 2.12 and see what happens well that doesn't work because that requires version SDK 2.12 or 0 huh why Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, they said English word 315. So let's try 315. And now it doesn't like what I typed. Maybe I need a space here. I need a space here. And now it works. Great. Okay. There might be a slight problem of versioning, but it seems to be working now. While viewing the pubspec file in Android Studio's editor view, click pubget. This pulls the package. Well, we didn't have to do that because we're not using Android Studio. We're using VS Code and it did uh, run pubget. So, nice. You should see the following in console. Flutter pubget. Yes, we saw that. In lib import the new package. Okay. So far, so good. I understand what I'm doing. Uh, I'm, um, they want us to import that before the material thing. So it's a package. And what package do we want? We want English words. English words. Dot dot. Thank you, Visual Studio, for the autocomplete. And now it complains that I'm not using it. Yes, and use import. Right, that's that's fine. As you type Android Studio, it gives you a suggestion for library. Yes, it's not Android Studio, but it did work. Use the English word package to generate the text instead of using the string hello world. Okay. So in order to do that, we need to come here and just before the return statement, we add a final word pair equals word pair dot random oh it doesn't see random random okay will that work ah because it doesn't know what word pair here is is it can't be referenced before it is declared uh what did i forgot Oh, no, here. Here we go. That's much better. 
and it's the blue squiggly line says that uh, it's unused. Okay, I'm going to use that. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh, so now why is our center no longer a constant? Probably because we're going to replace this constant string with something that is not constant and that's going to upset the compiler. It says, evaluation of this constant expression throws an exception uh, because it's ah because that is constant, it it probably waits for a constant expression here. So if I remove the const as is suggested by the um, tutorial, then everything seems to be working fine. What does our uh, phone say? Let's bring the phone back in. Uh, it says hello world. Oh, that's weird. Let's rerun the application. I'm pretty sure hello world is not an English word and or pair of word. And if they are in the list of um, of words, then it would be a real uh, a real uh, coincidence that we got that as a pair of a word. Um, I'm lost. I don't see it working. So run again. Maybe it didn't like the um, the addition of a new package. Oh, because the package was not in the APK, probably. All right, that works better. Okay, so that's a random world. Cool. Cool, a random pair of worlds. So far, so good. Uh, that's... Uh, how do I close this? The widget inspector, like that, yes. If the app is running, hot reload to update the running app. Each time you click hot reload or save the project, you should see a different work pair. True, so let's try. Save that. Oh yeah, save that. It is working. It is working. Yoo hoo. Okay. And uh, this is because the word pairing is generated inside the build method, which is run each time the material app requires rendering or when toggling the platform in Flutter Inspector. Uh, probably no. Add a stateful widget. Stateless widgets are immutable, meaning that their properties can't change. All values are final. Stateful widget maintains state that might change during the lifetime of the widget. Implementing a stateful widget requires at least two classes. A stateful widget class that creates an instance of a state class. The stateful widget class is itself immutable and can be thrown away and regenerated, but the state class persists over the lifetime of the widget. In this step, you will add a stateful widget, random words, which creates a state class, random state. You then use random word of the child inside the existing MyApp stateless app, uh, widget. Okay. Create a boilerplate code for a stateful widget. In LimbMainDart, position your cursor after all the code. After all the code, yes, okay. On to return a couple times to start on a fresh line on your ID. Tap stateful. The editor asks if you want to create a stateful widget. No. Don't tell me. Oh, so nice. So nice. It is so cool. I love this already. So that's random words. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's so great. On the random one, the name of the widget. The random widget does little besides uh, creating its state. Uh, okay. Once you've entered random word as the name of the stateful widget, the ID automatically updates, updates the according list. The accompanying state class, naming it random word state. Yes. 
Well, I mean, I, I say it's great. It's it's um, the snippet functionality of Visual Studio Code, but still, it's impressive. Uh, the random which is once you've entered random words and then that uh, I've read that already by default the name of the state class is prefixed with an underbar. Underbar, okay. I call that an underscore, but it yeah, why not underbar? It sounds like wunderbar. <laughs> Prefixing an identifier with an underscore enforces privacy in the Dart language and is a recommended best practice for state objects. Mm, okay. Okay, so that's how you define this, the um, visibility of the object. Okay, so what did it do? So we have a class, random word, which is a stateful widget. Okay. Const random words, key, key, super key, key. <laughs> so that's, uh, that looks like a constructor that would use a key that may be null. This requires a non-nullable experiment to be experiment to be enabled. Try enabling this experiment by adding it to the common line when compiling and running. Mm, okay, we'll see. Now that calls the super constructor of stateful widgets, passing key as the value to the key parameter, I guess. And then we overwrite create state, which is a function of stateful widget, I will guess. And we'll return a random word state, which is there. That extends state of random words. Okay, and this state will build a widget, sorry, which is going to return a an empty container. Okay, I guess we'll see more in the, the rest of the tutorial. The ID also automatically updates the state class according uh, to extend state random words indicating that you're using a generic state class specialized for use with random words. Most of the app's logic resides here. It maintains the state of the random words widget. Okay, so this maintains... This will maintain the state of a random words widget, I guess. So my guess is we can have as many random words widget as we want, and then we're going to have as many states as we have widgets. Uh, this class saves the list of generated word pairs, which grows infinitely as the user scrolls. And in part two of this lab, favorites word pairs as the user adds or removes them from the list by toggling the heart icon. Oh, that's so cute, a little heart icon. I would have preferred like a unicode icon or something, but uh, hey. Oh, I forgot to remove the phone from the screen. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, both classes now look like as follow. We've already gone over that. Update the build method of the uh, in the random word state. Uh, so that's here and that's the build method and so far it returns an empty container. But what we want is something else. We want a word where, okay. And then we return a text of the word pair dot as Pascal case. Uh, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why? 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 I'm missing a parenthesis somewhere. Oh, yes, there, that should be a lot better. Oh, nice, auto-formatting on save. I like that. I like that very much. Saves me the tr trouble to formatting the code myself. Okay, I remove the word generation code from my app by making the changes shown in the following div. So uh, now we, okay, so that's, let me let me think about that a little bit more. That is the random words state, and each time we call build on that, it returns a text widget. Uh huh. Okay. So we don't 
need that anymore, right? And instead of returning a text, we return a random words. Oh, okay, so random words. So that's not a list. So we've created a stateful widget that just creates one thing. Hmm? Okay. Why not? I need to wake my phone. Hello, phone. Wake up. I thought I had uh, set that phone to 30 minutes. Maybe it's been 30 minutes already. Uh, let's uh, reload this app and see what it does. If it, it indeed does something, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. What's that lightning? Hot reload. There we go. Hot reload. Do hey. Uh, doesn't seem to be working though. If I save. No, I need to stop and restart. Oh, build error. Okay, show errors. This required an unimaginable experiment. Right. It surely does require that thingy. Mm, okay. Experiment. Experiment. No, there's no experiment in there. Okay. Well, I'm going to remove this uh, thing. It's probably something that is in an, in the newer SDK that for some reason I don't have installed. Oh, we'll see. Let's run that and see how it looks on the phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so far, so good. Hot reload. Yes. It seems to still be working. It doesn't do anything more than before, but it, it, it works. Restart the app. The app should behave as before displaying a word pairing each time you hot reload or save the app. Uh, problems no. Create an infinite scrolling list view. And now we're try we're starting to use real uh, UI stuff, so that's uh, getting interesting. So I'm going to get my phone in front of me instead of like half a half a kilometer away. I need to clean the mess that is my desk one day. Fortunately, you don't see that. Okay, a little bit of coffee, and here we go again. Um, we're going to dive into building UI stuff. In this step, you will expand random word state to generate and display a list of words pairings. As the user scrolls the list, uh, it grows infinitely. List viewers builder factory constructor allows you to build a list view lazily on demand. Wow. Add a suge suggestion list to the random word state class for saving suggested words. Word pairing. Also add a bigger font variable for making the font size larger. Right, okay, we can do that. Um, random, random word state. So the way I understand that is that everything that we want to keep should go in the state and Everything that is actually uh, display stuff should be in the stateful widget. But I might be wrong because I don't know anything yet. But I do know a lot more than uh, when we started. So that's a word pair. Uh, wait, what, where is word pair in brackets? I hope they will explain that later on. Bigger font, yes, we, we like bigger font because we're getting old, 
Well, I'm talking to. I'm talking about me anyway. Text style font size 18.0. Okay. Right. Next, you'll add a build suggestions fun function to the state class. This method builds the list view that displays the suggested word pairing. The list view class provides a builder property item builder that's a factory builder and callback function specified as an anonymous function. Two parameters are passed to the function, the builder context and the row in iterator i. The iterator begins at zero and increments each time the function is called. It increments twice for every suggested word pairing, once for the list title and once for the divider. This model allows the suggested list to continue growing as the user scrolls. Okay, add a build suggestion function to the state class. So the state class is here. So let's add a widget uh, underscore or underbar build suggestions. Yes, and that will return a list view dot builder. Okay. Okay. Uh, right. This thing has what? A padding. Okay. Edge insets dot all sixteen point zero. I hope they explain what that means because I have no idea. Item builder. So the item item builder. Yeah, maybe uh, one. So that's a command. Oh, that's one, two, three, four. That's for the um, explanation. So we don't need that. Uh, it just gets a context and an index. And what does it do with that? If I is odd. Then return return const divider. Ah, okay. Final index equals i tilde slash two. So my guess is that is uh, the, gives us the reminder. Well, we'll see that if index greater than suggestion length. Okay. Oh, so if we are at the end of the of the suggestion list, then suggestions. Oh, I forgot a, an S. Suggestions. Dot. Add all. Generate word pairs. Dot. Tech 10. What the heck does that mean? Return build row suggestions of index. Okay, uh, build row doesn't exist yet, and uh, builder is not happy. The build builder is then defined for the type list view. Wow. Wow. So that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem if we don't have the correct SDK and we don't have the correct functions. Oh, maybe we need to import something. Uh, yes, that's we list, list view builder. That's what I want. And then it needs an item builder. Yes. So what? Oh. <laughs> Builder with an L. Yes, I do that often. I miss, uh, I miss things. And I once again, I forgot to remove the phone from the view. Uh, okay, build row. It doesn't exist, but we're going to build that later on, apparently. So the item builder callback is called once per suggested word pairing and places each suggestion into a list title row, a list list tile row for even rows the function adds a list tile row of the word pairing for odd rows the function adds a divider widget 
to visually separate the entries. Note that the divider might be difficult to see on smaller devices. Two, so two, that's the divider here. Add one pixel high divider widget before each row in list view. Three, that's that here. I'm going to, uh, yeah, someday I'm going to uh, be friend with that. Um, the expression i tilde slash 2 divides i by 2 and returns the integer result. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 becomes 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. What? Oh, okay, yes. No, so that's not the reminder, that's the uh, the opposite of the, rem the reminder. This calculates the actual number of word pairing in the list view minus the divider widgets. For if you've reached the end of the available word pairing, gen then generate 10 more and add them to the suggestion list. Uh, generate word pairs returns an iterable word pair. Really? Really? And uh, where did it get that from? Did we write that? What if I press F12? No. Oh, no, it's in the word pair. Word pair that. Okay. Okay, that's to generate an, an iterable. And then take 10. We'll take the first 10 of that. Oh, nice. So we don't need to prefix that because I guess we have this thing here. Awesome. The build suggestion function calls build row one spare word pair. This function displays each new pair in a list tile, which allows you to make the rows more attractive in the next step. Okay. Add a build row function to random state. Uh, this time I'm going to copy and paste that so that we don't lose time, but we're going to go over this. Uh, return list tile title text pair as pascal case style bigger font okay so if i press hot reload it doesn't seem to be working so i'm going to do stop and start and then i'm going to show the phone on the screen let's see does it work will it work or won't it work well it's still working you can't see it i guess because it's just behind of me just behind me what do we have now we don't have a lot oh <laughs> yes i forgot to change the to actually call our build suggestion function okay uh, so what did what did that do? That did that didn't do much. But now we need to to call build suggestion. So in the random word state, uh, in the random word state class, update the build method to use build suggestions rather than directly calling the word generation library. Scaffold implements the basic material design visual layout. Replace the method body with the highlighted code. Okay, in the random state uh, function, which is uh, here, and we need to change the build thing. And now we're going to return that. I'm going to copy and paste that, and then have a look at it. Okay, uh, and what does that do? It calls scaffold, which brings the uh, whole thing together with an app bar which has a title startup name generator and then a body which is the list and guess what it did hot reload it did hot reload uh what if i do that and then that oh that's uh, not a good idea undo uh, i want to remove the this thing here okay so we now have a list and if we scroll and we have more lists and more and more and more and I can scroll very fast and it still works. It still catches up with me and generates uh, names on the fly. I like that. I like that. And indeed the... the well, actually, I think we can 
we can see the um, the dividers a little bit more on the stream than on the phone itself, which is a bit weird because I'm sending the screen to OBS via the HDM HDMI capture card, so it should be uh, should be the same. But okay, so we now know how to build a list. So if we want to recap a little bit. Uh, our our main ha main app calls random words as it its body. Random words is a stateful widget that does nothing but create a state. Uh, and then okay, so that's that's an overridden function. So my guess is the stateful widget thingy gets that state and calls the, the build function of the state whenever it needs to refresh the widget and the state in its build function returns a scaffold so that's the uh, that's the uh, the material app function uh, it creates an app bar well it's it's strange that that is inside that I might have uh, I might have uh, forgotten something. I don't know. Because home home instead of having that it probably needs to be random words, but that's okay. We're going to we're going to fix that later on. Okay, and so where, where was I? Yes, here. And so the body of our uh, our mm, application is build suggestion. Build suggestions return a list view builder. That's interesting. We're not returning a list view. We're returning a list view builder. And then we have a item builder function, which is uh, which builds every items when we need them that's neat that's neat okay oh well that's what i was uh referring to in my in the my app class uh, let's uh remove the phone in the my app class update the build method by changing the title and changing the home to be random word widget Okay, so let's do that. So instead of welcome to Flutter, this is going to be startup name generator. And then the center is not a scaffold. Uh, not the home is not a scaffold thingy. This is going to be random words. Okay. And now if I save that, have a look at that. It is noise. Uh, I'm starting to have a, a feel for that. I'm feeling like uh, we can do something with that. Restart the app, you should see a list of word pairing no matter how far you scroll. Yes. We have seen that already. Profile or release runs. Do not test the performance of your app with the debug and hot reload enabled. So far, you've been running your app in debug mode. Debug mode trades performance for useful developer features such as hot reload and step debugging. It's not unexpected to see slow performance and junky animations in debug mode. Once you are ready to analyze performance or release your app, you'll want to use Flutter's profile or release build mode for more details. See. Flutter's build mode. Doo -doo -doo. Flutter's build mode. Debug, release, and profile. The Flutter tooling supports three modes when compiling your app, and a headless mode for testing. You choose a combination, a compilation mode depending on where you are, development cycle. So debug, we've seen debug. We have lots of stuff. Release, use release mode for deploying the app when you want maximum optimization. 
and minimal footprint size for mobile release mode. For mobile release mode, which is not supported on the simulator or emulator, means that um, blah blah blah. Yes, we can we can see we profile in the profile mode. Some debugging ability is maintained enough to profile your app's performance. Profile mode is disabled on the emulator and simulator because their behavior is not representative of real performance on mobile. Profile mode is similar to release mode with the following differences. Some services extensions, as, such as the one that enables the performance overlay, are enabled. Tracing is enabled and tools supporting source-level debugging, such as DevTools, can connect to the process. Okay, so I guess it's profile for the for the beta or something, and then uh, and then go to debug uh, to pro um, release. Congrats! Yes. Okay, you've written an interactive Flutter app that runs on both iOS and Android. This could help you. No, 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 no. Okay. I want to learn more uh, and maybe go to the step part two of the uh, tutorial. Introduction to widget, building layouts, add interactivity. Apply your existing knowledge for Android developer, for Java, data, for iOS developer, for React Native developer. And so th 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 those are the things for people coming from another platform. Flutter sample, Flutter cookbook, bootstrap into Dart, learn more about the language, Flutter API, API docs. Okay. Well, let's go there. Okay. Well, I guess now it's just a question of Exploring the API, figuring out what uh, what widgets exist and what kind of app we want to do. So, yeah, uh, this has taken an hour an hour already, but I think I'm. What can we do? Uh, I I don't have an idea for an app right now. Uh, well, I do have an idea for an app, but uh, it would mean, uh, you know, fiddling around and trying stuff, but I guess we can do that. Uh, text widget Flutter comes with a suite of powerful basic widgets, of which the following are commonly used container, stack, rockolon, text. Container, the widget, lets you create a rectangular visual element. A container can be decorated with box decorations such as a background, a border, or a shadow. The container can also have margin spellings and content constraints applied to its size. In addition, a container can be transformed in three-dimensional space using a matrix. Wow. Below are some simple widgets that combines these and other widgets. Okay. Uh, okay. Be sure to... Uh, no, yes, we have that. Oh. Hangling gesture. Changing widgets in responsive input. So far, this page has used only stateless widget. Stateless widgets receive argument from their parent widget, which they store in final member variable. When a widget is asked to build, it uses these stored values to derive new arguments for the widget it creates. In order to build more complex experience, for example, to react in more interesting ways to in user input applications typically carry some state for the use stateful widgets. That's what we just saw probably just before. What follows is a more complete example that brings together this concept and hypothetical Oh thank you for the follow, Ali. Did you manage to uh, fix your uh, your um, bleed thirty two app yesterday? Uh, bring it to the city and maintains a shopy 
shopping cart for intended purchases. Start by defining a presentation class shopping class cart item. That's that's gonna be interesting. There's an example parent widget that stores mutable state. Do they have like a complete example? No, they don't. No, they don't. Okay. So yeah, I think I think what I'm going to do now. Uh, I'm going to remove the phone from here. Uh, let's bring the chat. Well, Flutter is uh, has been not very friendly um, earlier this afternoon. I spent about two hours trying to install uh, Android Studio and the Android SDKs uh, and signing the well, not signing it, accepting the uh, the licenses. It turns out that I had to install Java eight, which is not at all uh, uh, you know. Uh, provided by the Android SDK, they provide Java 11. But if you want to run the tool to check the license, then you need Java 8. So I had to install that. Yes, I know there's a snap of Android Studio. Uh, I did use the uh, the table though because uh, that's what was uh, described on the on the website. And then between the, the the streams, I realized that there was this, that there is a snap. So, but I'm not. I don't know if the snap uses the. Uh, the, uh, the, the 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 which version of Java it uses, but apparently, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I I did screw up the install, but I had two SDKs and only one had its license agreed, uh, so I had to use the command line tool, but that didn't work as expected. So uh, uh, the the video is on YouTube if you want to <laughs> see the mistakes I made. But I, I had it. Uh, I got it running in the end, so that's uh, that was that's okay. And we just went through the tutorial on Flutter. I've used to make a real app that's on the App Store, so yes, it does work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The SDK manager is a bit complex for Android. That's what I was uh, I was referring to in the first stream. I mean, you need to have the correct SDK that targets the correct version of Android, and then even. If you have that, you still need to take into account that there are many screen formats, and then you need to think about big phones, small phones, uh, phones that are have not that don't have the same aspect ratio, and stuff like that. And uh, I always found that a little bit complex for Android development. Whereas on iPhone, you target iPhone 11s, and that's it. You have uh, all the iPhones 11 of the world, so it's a little bit easier for iPhone, but. Uh, I guess it's a it's just a question of uh, of habit. Uh, I haven't done too much Android development, so maybe I'm just more used to uh, iPhone development. Yeah, and so here's the result of the tutorial. It's an infinite scrolling list of English words, which is nice because uh, yeah, well, and we've seen a few concepts. So I'm going to what I'm going to do uh, off streams. I'm going to read the doc, which is something which is not really interesting uh, on stream, and then I will come back uh, maybe with an, an idea for an app, and we'll try to build that app uh, live on the stream. So yeah, there we go. I think I'm going to stop there. It's uh, yeah, it's been an hour and six minutes now. So, thank you, Big Pod. Thank you, Ali, for joining this, the chat. Um, it was great. Uh, thank you for the follow, Ali. Uh, always nice to have new followers. I do that kind of stream uh, in various languages and at various, usually non scheduled <laughs> times. Uh, so, if you want to see uh, more dev like that, Python mainly, and I will be next Tuesday. I will be hosting uh, on the Ubuntu on Air channel. Um, I will be showing how to install VS Code and some plugins and get ready for some PHP and Angular development. So that will be next Tuesday, uh, which is uh, Tuesday 
uh, the 7th of September at 9.30 p.m. Central European time, so that's 7.30 p.m. UTC, the Ubuntu on Air channel. Uh, I will probably be back on my channel this weekend tomorrow, uh, Sunday. Uh, maybe doing this Flutter thing, or maybe the uh, Jack audio stream, where I will try and show everybody that Jack is not complex to use, and it's really simple. Um, well, that's it, hopefully. The music was not too loud, the uh, screen was uh, okay, you could, uh, you guys could read what was on the screen. Uh, if it was a little bit too small, just let me know and I will uh, I will uh, make the, the font bigger next time. Other than that, that's it for me. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, subscribe on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. Follow on Twitch next time you pass by. And uh, I will see you very soon. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.